Hello everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing book number 14 on the favorites list, My Life as a Smash Burrito with Extra Hot Sauce by Bill Myers. I do not have a copy of the book handy, which should probably tell you right away uh, where it is in relation to whether it's a favorite or not. But if the technology gods are smiling upon us, then I will be able to flash a picture of the cover now. If not, then you just saw me wave my fingers in the air for no reason. So this is a book that I encountered while I believe in middle school and read it a bunch of times. It's actually the first of a series called The Adventures of Wally McDougal. Wally McDougal is a self-proclaimed dorkoid. He's infamously clumsy and awkward and whatever else. He's a complete dork. He's also a Christian and he's stumbling through his adolescent life trying to figure out God and the Bible and all the things related to that. So yes, it's a children's religious fiction book. Not normally my type of literature, but these books I actually did really enjoy. As I said, it's the first book in a series. I only read the first book because the series is well over 30 books long. It's one of those series like Goosebumps or Animorphs that they just keep adding books on to. I lost interest in the series after book 13 and I really only enjoyed the first eight books. The thing is that book one is really the only normal, realistic book in the series, at least the one that's the most normal and realistic. The defining thing about Wally McDougall's character is that he's clumsy and awkward and he's always getting himself into trouble through his clumsy awkwardness. But it's a series of 30 books and that will only take you so far, and so the situations get more and more unbelievable and outlandish. So I decided for this review only to read the first book where Wally McDougall is in a relatively normal situation. He has an encounter with the class bully, known only as Gary the Gorilla. He comes out of the situation with Gary being completely, albeit accidentally, humiliated in public. Not a terribly good situation for Wally, except that now the entire camp regards him as a hero. An accidental hero, but a hero nonetheless. And so now he is being called upon to further humiliate Gary the Gorilla. Now the camp to which I have been referring is a church camp where they are supposed to have been learning about wisdom from a camp counselor named Dale. So when the shit hits the fan, as it were, and Dale finds out about the whole situation, he realizes that he's not getting through and that it's time to take his teaching of wisdom a step further. And to put Gary and Wally into a situation where they have to cooperate and help each other. The book is quite funny. It's written in first person from Wally's perspective in a very informal style, and actually a style that I began to emulate when I first began writing my own stories. Lots of jokes and funny metaphors thrown in, that sort of thing. And Wally wants to be a screenwriter. That's his passion. He loves writing. He takes his laptop computer with him everywhere. Understand this book was written in the early 90s when it wasn't normal to carry a laptop computer with you everywhere. And he's always working on some story, and the story that he's working on in each book always relates in some way to what's going on in his own life. So you basically got two different stories going on. You've got Wally's story about what's really happening, and then you've got the story that he's writing where he's kind of trying to work out all of this stuff in his head. Now, as I said, it is a religious fiction novel, and so there's bits of scripture thrown in, there's references to God and all that sort of thing thrown in, and normally I don't really care for religious fiction that much. I feel that by and large, religious fiction tends to be extremely preachy about the specific religion in question, which is usually Christianity. I prefer that if the novel has a message, that it not proclaim it as a strictly Christian message, but as a message that everyone should follow regardless of religious affiliation or lack thereof. The lesson of the novel is a good one, about wisdom and choosing your friends carefully and not acting out to humiliate somebody, and not making rash assumptions about a person's character when you barely know the guy. So for what it is, for, for a children's religious novel, it's actually very good. I think this would be a good book to have in a Sunday school class, to present to a Sunday school class, to teach them about wisdom because it's entertaining, it's funny, it's about a real life situation that has applicable things, not just scripture spouting. And reading it again, I still enjoyed the novel. But over the years, I've become a lot less tolerant of books that preach even a little bit. And so really for that reason and that reason alone, I'm taking this book off of my favorites list. I know it might not be a great reason for taking it off my favorites list, but I just didn't enjoy it as much this time around. So, My Life is a Smash Burrito with Extra Hot Sauce by Bill Myers. Good for what it is, but not good for staying on my favorites list. And the next book review is going to be Dear Mr. Henshaw by Beverly Cleary. Another book about an awkward sixth grader. How about that?
And now I'm going to turn off the camera and turn the air conditioning back on because it is starting to get very warm in here. So, see you later.